Joan Harrison, Donald Woods, Alan Gray, those of you with investments may know that name, Ernie Else, the Delians. Anybody remember the Delians? There we go, thank you. And last and most importantly, me. Just on behalf of the organizing committee, we, we pray that you will have an exceptional assembly. Uh, I don't think I'm being... Uh, well, thank you. Thank you, Trevor. I don't think I'm being too biased by saying this is probably one of the most well-organized assemblies that I've been to. <clears throat> and uh, just may you have an exceptional time, and if there is any possibility of staying a few days after the assembly, uh, just spend some time enjoying and getting to see the sights of East London. You will not be sorry. Just as we, we move on with the evening, won't you join me as we open in a word of prayer. Let's pray together. Our Father, we come to you this, this evening. We would just thank you for the incredible day that we've had. We thank you for the incredible spiritual input. We thank you for the opportunity to share together, the opportunity to fellowship the opportunity to meet one with the other. And Father, our prayer now for this evening and for the rest of the assembly, Holy Spirit, is that you would come and make your presence known among us. Won't you fill us with wisdom and discernment? Lord, we, we pray for those that will be leading this assembly, that you would give them the strength they need, that you would give them the wisdom they need. And may every decision made in the rest of this week be honoring and glorifying to your name. This is our prayer through Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. I'm going to hand over to Colin. Thank you. Good evening, everybody. It is my distinct honor and privilege to greet you again in the wonderful name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I have prayed that the Holy Spirit of God would meet with me and meet with each one of us. And I trust that that too is your prayer. So that we can hear what the Spirit has to say to his church. I'm going to ask you from the very beginning, throughout all the sessions, that you ensure that your phone is on silent. And when somebody calls you, that as you leave, you don't start talking because you will disturb other people. Wait till you're beyond the doors. Amen? Because this is a time of worship. We are the church gathered in his name. So I trust that together we will sense the presence and the power of the Holy Spirit among us. That it is not business as usual, but that we allow much freedom for the Spirit of God to minister to each one of us. Thank you. Right, I greet you all in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Good to be here again. And it uh, feels like I've been coming to East London for a very long time. It started in December last year when we started planning for the assembly. And I must just say, we will talk about it at the end of the assembly, but 
to the folk that have planned this assembly. You have done a superb job. And uh, give a round of applause to that planning team for this assembly. <laughs> Unfortunately, we've got to go through a lot of uh, business just for a half an hour or so. And I just want to explain how you're going to work when it comes to a accepting of the, of the tabling of the reports, etc. Those of you that have voting delegate rights, you'll see on the back of your, um, um, your little lanyard over here, there's a green form that's been put in. If you've got a green form at the back of your lanyard, you have voting rights. If you haven't, you cannot vote. The scrutineers will be keeping an eye on that. So please, don't be, we can only vote with this. We cannot vote with hands or anything else. So when we move to table a motion or we need just a show of hands for the tabling of a motion, all you do is just raise this so we can get an idea. All right, so we can see. Let's try it. Let's see, guys. Let's put up the green cards. Let's just see how it works. I can see. That's perfect. Excellent. Thank you, man. Thank you. The other voting for the motions will be done by ballot. It will be electronic ballot. Now, before I start anything else, tomorrow morning, 8 o'clock, down over in this corner over here, Mark will be giving training on how to use the electronic ballot. So you'll be using your phone. So if anybody wants just to update we did it the last two assemblies, but if you wanted you to update on how to vote on your phone for the five motions that are coming to the floor that have to be decided by ballot, um, it will be done in this corner. Mark will give you an overview of how to do that tomorrow morning. The scrutineers will also be here. Um, so all other votes, all other straw votes, all other show of hands will be done with the card with the green thing behind it. All right. We have at the moment a requirement of 10% of our member churches to form a quorum, which is 44 churches. At present, we have 98 churches, so we comfortably uh, form a quorum for this assembly. There are a number of fellowships. There are 18, which is quite a high number of fellowships with us this year as well. They don't have voting rights, but uh, we do see you and we accept you at this assembly, and we are glad you are here. And hopefully you'll be full, full, full member churches very, very shortly. Number of voting delegates at the present are 109, and we have non-voting delegates at 89, and there's a total of 223 registered delegates. There are still some folk coming tomorrow. So with those numbers, that means that we can continue with business, and I'd just like to hand over to Greg to officially constitute the assembly. Just before I do that, uh, Pastor Colin, for those who are watching us online, we want to welcome you too as well, and thank you that you're part of um, the assembly here in East London, and now having met the quorum adequately, it is my privilege to declare that this assembly in East London, the 144th one, is now officially um, constituted. Thank you, and may we have a wonderful assembly together as God's people. Thank you, sir. Just, um, I need to have your agreement around the minutes keepers. We have those ladies over there, and that's Mrs. Zipo Mpechlo, uh, Mrs. Zipo Mpechlo and Mrs. Nosifiso, Georgia. If you can just stand, ladies, so that everyone can see you, they will be taking the minutes for us. They are both seasoned minute takers. <laughs> and so I am sure they will do a very good job of recording the business of the assembly. They will be assisted in each session by an NLC member or a BU officer to, uh, for oversight purposes. So thank you, ladies, for that. Um, the timekeeper, Mark Udendal, we're not doing timekeeping with the, the, the normal um, bulbs and that type of thing. It will be done electronically. And so we will monitor it from the, from the desk over there. We'll use the screen over there if there's a time issue. Uh, the scrutineers, if I can just have the four scrutineers, where are you all? If you can just come to the front over here, guys, if you don't mind, so that the folk can see you. The four scrutineers, it's, it's Reverend Tandu Kolo, Yoyo, Sergio Lo, Sam Tamba, and Kalani Kalani. Give them a hand. So those are the guys that will be doing the scrutineer work, um, running around, counting the votes, putting things out on tables, and all the stuff the scrutineers do. Thank you, guys. All right. Now, what we do need to do is just have a, a, um, the, the blessing of the house on these people we've just mentioned. Can I move that we agree to the minute takers? And can I just by a show of hands, those in favor of the minute takers as they've been introduced, can I have a show of hands, please? 
Green cards up. All right, oh, that's all four. Any against? Any abstentions? So it is. Ladies, you've got a job for four days. <laughs> the scrutineers, uh, as they've been introduced, you are in favor. Please put up your green card. Thank you. Thank you. Any against? Any abstentions? Thank you. So the scrutineers are officially part of the assembly. I will do any news media coordinating. If we need to talk to any of the media outside, it'll be my job over the next four days. Now you'll find um, in addendum one of your booklet, don't turn there now, I'm just pointing, you, sh you, you can read it at a later time. I'm just tabling the new uh, assembly rules. It's in addendum one at the back of the book. You will have this handbook um, at addendum one. You will have the new, the new assembly rules of order. Please don't read through them now. You can read through them later. It's just how the assembly works in terms of voting, etc., etc. So I move to table that new. Um, it was done by uh, Eric Leroux and ratified by Professor Rob Vivian. So it's been done thoroughly uh, taken care of. And I just move to accept that and uh, table that at least. Can I have a show of hands if you accept that in addendum one? If you don't mind, green cards if you agree. Is that everybody? All right. Anybody got a problem with the rules of uh, assembly? None. Any abstentions? Thank you. All right. Um, the next order of business is the confirmation of the standing committees. The standing committees you will find at the back of the, the book. I'll tell you the page now if you want to find it. 51, thank you. 51 to 53, uh, just to table those. Do you accept the tabling of those committees? Again, just a show of the green cards, please. Please take a moment to read through those sometime in the assembly as well. Guys, I don't see any hands up. Any, if you can just stick it up and I can just get a view. All right, any against? Any abstentions? Thank you. Um, then we have the tabling of all written reports. The written reports are all the Baptist Union reports, the regional reports, and the departmental reports. Uh, again, I have to ask for to be moved, uh, that we table it. Uh, the NLC brings it to the table, and I can ask again, if you just accept those reports, they are in the handbook. You can read through them at your leisure if you haven't yet, yet done so. Can I just move that we accept those for tabling? Thank you. And is there any against tabling any of those reports? Any abstentions? Thank you. All right, then we go on to the financial accounts. The financial accounts of these, uh, of these are on, the, uh, you'll find, I think it's page 53 or 54. Let me just get there. Page 54, you'll find the budget for 2024 and also the annual financial statement for 2022. You can please read through those to prepare for tomorrow's um, financial presentation. And again, please, I table these. Can you accept them? A show of hands again, please. Those in favor of accepting them, thank you. Any against? Any abstentions? Thank you, sir. All right. Now I have to table the various motions. There are five motions being brought by the NLC to the assembly this year. And I would like to take just a moment to, uh, to table them. Um, I must just say there's one amendment to one of the emotions which I will explain and we get to that particular one but the, there are five motions the first one is the amendments a motion to call for amendments to the BU Constitution I'll explain that in more detail tomorrow but I'm just tabling the motion the resolution so if you could just accept the motion as being tabled and put before you if I have a show of hands again please sir and madams thank you any against any of that motion number one Thank you. Any abstentions? Thank you. Then we need to fill our quota of BU trustees. It has, we've been running lean on that over the last couple of years. Now we have got a full quota. Should, they, should this body accept the names that are put before them later on in the day tomorrow? But uh, just to table that we are appointing new BU trustees. Voting will come up tomorrow. Show of hands as we table, please. Thank you. Guys, you're going to be very fit by the time into this is all finished. And uh, any against? Right, okay, all right, and any abstentions? Thank you. Then we, we got a, 
a motion being brought to streamline the appointment of BU operational leaders just to shorten the period that it takes to employ these folk. Um, it will be explained tomorrow in more detail. It will be motion three. And motion three again, if you accept the motion being tabled, please just show your cards. Thank you. Any against? And any abstentions? Thank you. Motion four is some business on the ministerial regulations list. It's around the lay pastors. It will be explained by the pastoral support team on Wednesday, um, and it'll be up for discussion. So, um, but it's just that there are some changes. A lot of it is gram grammar. A lot of it is just terminology changes, but it has to come through this body. So again, if you accept that motion to change some of the ministry regulations, again, just a show of hands, please, sirs and madams. Thank you. All right, any against? All right, any abstentions? All right. The last one, the BU Church Exit Policy. There has been a change to the, the motion found in your book. Um, there has been discussion, and legally, uh, the legal advisors have advised us to tone down some of the paragraphs in that particular exit policy, and so we've withdrawn a paragraph in that policy from the one that stands in your book. On your tables, if you can look there, you would have had an amended policy line there, motion five. Has everyone got one on the tables? Especially the voting delegates, if you can just, if you haven't got one, we can get you one. There should be on the tables, motion five, and it should read BU Church Exit Policy. If you look at the page at the back of that, you'll see there's a paragraph that has been deleted. The paragraph is there, so we can see what has been taken out. Um, and so the amended motion will be brought now to the floor for voting. This voting will be tomorrow afternoon, late. Um, everyone got one? Everyone seen one? Can I sh ask for approval for that motion to be tabled, please, sir? Madam? Thank you. Can you put your hands up? Thank you. And any against? Any abstentions? All right. All right, guys, I hope I got through that business quickly enough for you. We don't want to spend the whole evening. I know it's late, but it has to be done. And um, so I just want to take your time just to thank you for just being patient with us at this point in time. Um, are there any questions on any of the things we've just done? Any comments, any questions, any objections? All right. Okay, thank you. We're going to move on a little bit onto the pastoral lists this evening. Um, we're going to hand over to, to, to Greg um, in a moment or two, and he's going to do the immemorium for us, and uh, there will be a hymn sung. And then we're going to move on to the pastoral removals and resignations and reinstatements, followed by the long service awards, followed by full accreditations, probations and student passes, and then we'll be finishing this evening with the communion, communion service. So, guys, you should have a communion little cup on your table with the wafer inside it. So, without further ado, I'm going to hand over to Greg, and he's going to, hand, he's going to deal with the immemorium. Thank you. Thank you, Colin. I'm just going to ask um, Ursula to join me, and she will just... Um, here on the side, because I'm going to ask you to close for, um, to, to pray for um, the families of those loved ones who have passed on. If we can get a picture, we might need to um, switch the stage light on off. Will it be necessary? No. I can't see from here where I am. Thank you. This is a solemn occasion in which we recognize the ministries and valuable contributions that these saints of God had made to individual lives and congregations and associations 
and to our union. We recognize that um, they lived among us and they served us and they have gone to be with the Lord that they've loved and serve. And we also that mourn their passing only, but we celebrate the gifts and the talents and abilities that God has given to them and that they have unselfishly used for his glory and for his honor. So the names, the pictures will appear and I will read a very brief tribute to each one of them. Reverend William Bill Dodgen, Lieutenant Colonel William Charles Dodgen was a Defense Force Chaplain General in the old Rhodesia for many years. He also served the following churches in South Africa, namely Sasselburg, Alberton, Tanzin, and Springs Afrikaans Baptist Kerk. Reverend Hugh Wetmore, you and Phil were married on the 17th of June, 1961, and they were married for 61 years. Out of this marriage, three children were born, and they were blessed with nine grandchildren and six great-grandchildren. Reverend Anton Roos, Reverend Anton Ruiz studied at the Baptist Theological College and served the Baptist churches in Ruval, Calvary, and Port Shepton. Shepston. He later also served in the Kem Ministry, and he was a respected and a loved pastor, a husband and a father. Mrs. Pauline Eva Pinar, Pauline was born in 1949 in Ketmanswip in Namibia. In 1970, she met her husband, Cecil, and they were married for 53 years. Pauline and her husband, Pastor Cecil, served at Rocklands Baptist Church, London Village, and also Jerusalem Baptist Church until her home calling. Mrs. Sue Watson, in July 1971, Sue married Don Watson, who was a third year student at, the, student at the Baptist Theological College of Southern Africa. Sue worked as a community health nurse and also as a midwife. Sue was an ideal pastor's wife who loved and served the Lord and his church. The family so appreciates the prayerful support the wider Baptist family gave them at the time of her passing. Reverend Luiso Tatsbana, Tatsbani, Reverend Tatsbana planted Lucindikso Baptist Church in the early 90s. He pastored this congregation for many years. Reverend Tatsbana also served as the Baptist Board Association's president. He was a gifted evangelist. He preached his last sermon on Easter Sunday and was called home the next day. He was also a moderator to several churches. Sisipo Gumeni, Reverend Sipuzo studied theology at Cape Town Baptist Seminary and the University of Fort Hare. In 2019, Pastor Gumeni served as president of the Baptist Border Association. He and his wife, Vuzikazi, served in the Dikeni Trinity Baptist Church in Alice at the time of his passing. He passed on on the day that he buried one of his members in his congregation. David Waterson, Reverend David Waterson and his wife Beryl faithfully served God as they served the Baptist churches in Brackpan, George, Alberton, Stutterheim, Cartelville, 
Algoa Park, Lorraine, and Trinity Baptist Churches in Port Elizabeth. Pastor David was the shepherd with a servant's heart. Reverend Donald Wesson. Pastor Ron was a passionate, lifelong missional man. He founded and led the crusade for Christ. He poured his life into the growth and development of the rural pastors and the churches, often at the cost of his own health and family interests. Reverend Levelant Kleinhans. Pastor Kleinhans studied theology at the University of the Western Cape. He served as an associate pastor at Stromfontein Baptist and later pastored the Springwood Baptist Church in Mitchell's Plain. Reverend Michael Limber. Pastor Michael Limber was a strong leader and a good preacher. He pastored Decaney Trinity Baptist Church, Halasiswe, and Albany Baptist Churches. He lived behind his wife, perpetual and two grandchildren. Reverend Gladys Madikani. Gladys Madikani was born on the 8th of August 1936 in Jansenville. She completed the theological training at the then Baptist Bible Institute, Fort White. She was a church planter. She either served as an assistant church planter in and Pearson, Aberdeen, Oatshorn, and also planted the Bongoletu Baptist Church. In Cape Town, she worked in Kailicha and Harare Baptist Churches. In 1995, she went back to take care of her ailing mother and also assisted again in the church in Jansenville. Mr. Douglas Sear. Douglas supported his wife, Reverend Vanessa, in a peppy ministry. The couple were married on the 6th of May, 2023, and God called Douglas home 42 days after their marriage. Mrs. Lillian Dotseni. Pastor Michael and Mama Linda, Lillian married in 1982, and their marriage was blessed with two children. The couple served in several Baptist churches. Pastor Michael says of his dear wife Lillian, and I quote, the Lord has been so good to us over all these years. Her support was so enthusiastic in ministry. The Reverend Andrew Matia, his wife, Belinda, writes, our home church was Rosettenville Baptist. In 2010, Andre started his four years of study at BTC. During this time, he preached at times at Robertsham Baptist Church. In January, he was called to Boxburg Baptist Church, where he was the pastor for the last 10 years. Reverend James Scott, he studied at the seminarium and he, and he started and worked at the printing press for Free Baptist Church as well as working as a missionary in Lesotho. He and his wife served the, wel the welcome of Rikans Baptist de Kerk, Ribbekstad, and Moorgroet near Welkom. Reverend James Scott also worked at the Leprosy Mission in Bloemfontein. Mrs. Cynthia Winifred de Beer. Cynthia and Pastor Andre de Beer were married for 47 years on the 4th of September, and she was called home two weeks later. Cynthia and Pastor Andre de Beer served several Baptist churches over the period of 37 years. A love for God and a family will always be remembered. 
we treasure the memories of those who have gone before. There are many among us tonight who have lost loved ones more than one at a time in our family. And tonight we want to ask Ursula and you to continue to pray for those who have lost loved ones. I'm going to ask Ursula to also include the following couple. And I'll give you just a little bit of background through this text that I've just received a few moments ago. I says this was written to one of their family members. Hope you're doing well. So the doctors called us in today and told us to prepare ourselves for the worst. Chanel is unresponsive and her level of consciousness is deteriorating very fast. I just thought I would let you know. Please inform the rest of the family. This is Pastor Denver and Beverly from Portland Baptist Church for their daughter, Chanel. She's been in hospital for her or intensive care, for I believe, for nine weeks. Here is a couple who is awaiting news regarding the well-being of their daughter. And you know how painful this is indeed for parents. So will you join Ursula as we, she prays and we pray that God, the Holy Spirit, would comfort families during this sad time. Second Timothy 4 from verses 6 to 8 says, I am already being poured out like a drink offering, and the time for my departure is near. I have fought the good fight. I have finished the race. I have kept the faith. Now there is in store for me the crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, will award me on that day. And not only me, to me, but also to all who have longed for his appearing. Shall we bow in a word of prayer? Father, this evening we thank you. We thank you, Lord God, that you have called your servants to be your ambassadors, who faithfully, Lord Jesus, proclaimed your love to the many people they have touched with their lives. Thank you for your faithfulness to them. In every season of their lives, we worship you, Lord. We bow humbly in adoration that you used each one of them with their particular gifts and abilities. We pray now, Father, that for the spouses, we pray for the extended families, we pray for the children, their grandchildren, and all those that they have left behind, we pray for your hand to be upon them, that you would pour out your love, that they may sense your presence with them each day, that you would reassure them, Lord God, that underneath them and all around them are the everlasting arms of our faithful Father. So be with them in a very special way for all those who have lost loved ones. Father, tonight we think of Pastor Denver. We think of Sister Beverly. Oh Lord, in the name of Jesus, we pray that you would draw close to that couple in a very special way. You know this past year how many times their daughter has been in hospital and the challenging times that they have gone through with her. We pray for your perfect will to be accomplished in her life and that the peace of God would be their portion even right now as they stand around that bed, Lord God, in that hospital, that your angels will take charge, Lord, and that your perfect will be done for Christ's sake. Amen.
God has been faithful to those who have served him faithfully. He's faithful to us now. So let's declare together as we stand, great is your faithfulness. As great is thy faithfulness, O God, my Father. There is no shadow of turning with thee. Thou changest not thy compassions, they fail not. As thou hast been, thou forever will be. That's what Lord is faithfulness. Great is thy faithfulness. Great is thy faithfulness. Morning by morning, new mercies I see. All I have needed, thy hands have provided. Great is thy faithfulness, Lord, unto me. Summer and winter and springtime and harvest. Sun, moon, and stars in their courses above. Join with all nature in manifold witness to thy great faithfulness, mercy, and love. Great is thy faithfulness. Great is thy faithfulness, oh great is thy faithfulness, morning by morning, new mercies I see, all I have needed thy hands has provided, Lord, unto me. Pardon for sin and a peace that endureth. Thine own dear presence to cheer and to God. Strength for today and bright hope. Strength for today and bright hope for tomorrow. Blessings, all mine. Blessings, all mine, with ten thousand beside. Great is his faithfulness. Oh, great is thy faithfulness. Oh, great is thy faithfulness. Morning by morning, new mercies I see. All I have needed, thy hands have provided. Great is thy faithfulness. Great is thy faithfulness. Great is thy faithfulness, Lord, unto me. And all God's people said, Amen. Please be seated. Folk, for that um, time of reflection. It's always a very important time that we remember the saints that have gone before. And we certainly do bring to mind 
all those that have served in the Baptist Union and their churches over the last decades. We're going to move on just to some, uh, Greg's going to just read out all the pastoral removals, resignations and reinstatements. Um, just there, have we have had some resignations from our list so that we, just to make you aware, some of these took place quite a while back already. We had first time we're bringing it to the assembly. There are also a number of folk that have been taken off under the three-year rule that they haven't been in ministry or out of the country for three years. Their names have been removed from the ministry lists. And then there are two folk that are coming on back onto the ministry lists after disciplinary processes. So I'll leave that to Greg. Thank you. Um, Thank you. The removals um, from the ministry board list. The names of the follow are as follow: P. Simmons, Lance Lawton, Malcolm Cunningham, G. Baston, A. Sieberhagen, and B. Cartledge and E. Benson. Those who are reinstated to full accreditation again is M. Radebe and X. R. Kellen Jani. These are the names, sir. Thank you, Greg. It's, um, we can just now move on to the next part of the program. We're going to look at the Long Service Awards. Um, there's a number of folk coming up from 10 years up to 60 years. Uh, not everyone is here, uh, but we are going to ask that as we get going. Um, George and Gamlama, uh, where is George? Is he here? George? Georgie? Bishop? Oh, there we are. <laughs> George, please come up. We have to have the oldest guy in the room to do the long service awards. All right, George, thank you, my brother. If you can come up, and I'm going to ask, um, I know the, the Long Service Awards are generally supported by a small monetary token from the ladies' department, so Heather Sullivan is here somewhere. Heather, are you here? Or whoever's going to represent the women's department? Heather, I think Heather. Who? Ella. Okay, Ella, please come forward. Um, if you can come forward as well, just to greet the long service folk. Now, I'm going to just move up to the podium, and Greg's going to be over here as well. And we're going to call all the folk up in their various uh, year groups. And then if I can ask that everyone come up onto the stage in the front um, and we will hand out the long service awards that are due. Let me just find them. Thank you. Guys, if we can just stand right in front, I think it'll be easier. Um, we're going to start with the 10-year awards. And I'm going to hand them to George. I must say, George, don't mix them up. Uh, there you are, George. Thank you, man. All right. The following uh, qualify for 10 year awards. Um, is this not speakers not on, eh? Oh, you're right. I'll just use this one. Okay. All right. Um, first 10 year award is Kenneth Sharke. Kenneth Sharke. Is he here? Llewellyn Clayton. Is Marlon Felix, Ian Fraser. I saw Ian, yeah, that's right. If you can come up, Ian. Ian, if you can just stay on the stage, if you don't mind, on the far end. Thank you. All right. Mpumezi Hambana. Yeah. What, yeah. Bradley Jones. Temban Glovo. What, yeah. Shueni. Oh, here we go. All right.
Yeah, Timbo, welcome. Now don't go away. Whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> All right. Shweni Pacho or Fako. Jongi Kaya Siwali. Trevor Kater. Keith Lodachin. He's in Hamburg. I don't think he's going to be making it today. Elson El Glube. Uh, Patrick Hindrozello. Mark Woodendall, I saw him hiding away here somewhere. Mark, yeah, well done. <laughs> then we have Charmaine Peterson. Uh, Grant Skierpers, Alan van Heerden, and Richard van Liesout, and they are not with us. So, George, I think you are going to pray and say a few words over these folk later on, but so they can just stay up here. Now we want to move on to the next uh, list, which is the 25-year awards. There's a big gap between 10 and 25. I don't know how people can last that long, Yo. but uh, let me just get these out here for George. Twenty-five years. Timbile Dunge. Timbile Dunge. Norman Frost, Alpheus Sabaya, Neil Shaw, Franco Abrams, Andrew Murray, Colin Phelps, Grant Schaefer, Eugene Swan. Okay, so it's only those folk. All right. Now we move on to 40 years. Forty years, it's uh, Graeme Anderson, Michiel Joubert, and this guy, hey, the troublemaker, Andrew Sullivan. <laughs> right, there we got two fifty year awards. I'm not sure if these folk are here. There we are, George. Two fifty year awards. Uh, it's Ronald Nodier, or Ron Nodier as we know him, and Isaac van der Volt. Right. And then, two 60-year awards. Now, guys, this is really, you know, when I had to do this, I had to go through these lists. I had to go back to 1963. I wasn't even born then. And, uh, <laughs> and Linton Russell is the first name at Arise. And Linton, is, Linton, Linton was preaching till a few months ago still. So really, they're serving the Lord right to the end. And then, of course, we all know Arthur Song. So those are the two 60-year awards. I don't think either of them are here, so we will leave that for now. George, if you can say a short few words for these folk. Yes, you can use my mic over here, George. And pray for them. Thank you. There's a verse of Scripture in Lamentations, chapter 3, verse 23. It speaks about the faithfulness of God. And uh, we thank God for you and God's faithfulness to you. 
we may not be faithful all the time as servants of God, but he remains faithful. We serve a God that keeps his promises. We thank God for you guys. May God bless you. Father, we bless you for these, your servants. Thank you, Lord, for their long service. They won't be able to do it, Lord, if you didn't help them. So we commit them to you, Lord, that as they continue to serve you, you bless them in Jesus' name. Amen. Give a round of applause. Thanks, folk. We're going to go into fully accredited now. Um, Greg's going to stay up here to deal with and to greet and to bless the fully accredited list. Um, and most of these folk are here. They've traveled a long way to receive their full accreditation. And this is a great time. And if you speak to most pastors, they will remember the day they came onto the fully accredited list. It's a very special time in a pastor's life. And so as soon as we have a moment, let us... Um, I'm going to just pass these on to Greg, if you don't mind, Greg, if you can just take those. Thank you. Fully accredited. Nathan Aris. Nathan, we nearly thought you didn't have a certificate. <laughs> Solani Billy. We have Jesse Burnham. Hey, Jesse, did you make it? <laughs> hey, we're glad to see you, my brother. Damon Kotze. Come on, please come forward. <laughs> we have Siatanda Mafa. Siatanda. Then we have Professor Vumani Magedzi. Professor Vumani Magedzi, did he come? All right. Then we have Marissa September. Keith Westberg. Did Keith come down? Keith Westberg. All right. Jared Wood. Yeah. 
And lastly, Greg Jacobs. I've been called just to say a few words um, to you that you have now on the fully accredited list um, of our ministers of the Baptist Union. I want to ask you to go back and read 2 Corinthians chapters 2, 3, and 4, and I'm just going to extract just five brief points. I'm not going to, it's just bullets. I'm not going to elaborate on each of them. Paul says that our competency does not come from ourselves. It comes from the Lord who has made you competent as ministers of the new covenant. I must remember that. You need to remember that. All of us who are in ministry, one form or the other, must remember that. You have been called as a minister of the new covenant by the mercy of God. Paul says, therefore, having this ministry by the mercy of God. It's never on merit. It is always because of his great mercy. Thirdly, we do not preach ourselves. We preach Jesus Christ as Lord. And then fourthly, you are not the treasure You are a treasure chest, an earthen vessel, a clay pot. You are a crack pot used by a mighty God. And then fifthly, you have been entrusted with the ministry of reconciliation that you can say to men on Christ's behalf. Be reconciled to God and also to saints, to to mature, to edify them and to call them to maturity in Jesus Christ. What an honor, what a privilege, but also what an awesome responsibility. Thank you, Lord, that you have given to us this ministry this ministry of the new covenant written on our hearts by the power of your Holy Spirit you enable us earthen vessels to carry the unsearchable riches of Jesus Christ the glorious gospel into all the nations help us to honor you with our lives and with the truth that you've entrusted to each one of us. Use your servants for your great glory and for your honor. In Jesus' name and all God's people said, amen and amen. Thank you, God bless you. And then um, lastly, we've got probationers and the um, student list that we need to complete. And I'm going to call these folk up. I'm going to call Shadrach up as well. Is Shadrach here? Thank you, my brother. Thank you, Shadrach. Shadrach will be praying and um, just blessing the, the probationers as they come up. And I'm going to name them. I don't know if they're all here, but I know some of the folk are here. Gareth Brady. Eric Butelezi. 
These are probationers coming for the first time onto the probationer list. He's coming up, Jamie Coulson, Polozzo Diratizile, Reiter for Tain, Sipesichle Kumla. There we are. Balu Matkani, Daniel Moore, Urundeni, I know him as Mona Farley. James Pace, Brandon Townsend, Jermaine Williams, Nzwanzile Zulu. And then we've got two student names. Um, I've Christopher Stock and Nathan Leopard. I think Nathan is here somewhere. Nathan, yeah. There we go, Nathan. Shall we give him another round of applause, ladies and gentlemen? I was told to encourage students and probationers, and I want to start by quoting this man, H.B. Charles. He says, a desire to preach without a burden to study is a desire to perform. And as you heard uh, Pastor Grex earlier on saying that this is not because of anything that comes from us. There's no space to perform because whoever or whatever job you're going to do has got its own source and owner, and that's God himself. Echoing those words is Paul addressing Timothy. Second Timothy 2.15, a well-known portion of scripture says, in this vers version, uh, New Living Translation says, work hard so God can approve you, be a good worker, one who does not need to be ashamed, and who correctly explains the work of truth. We are living in an era where there is a depth and height of spiritual that resembles stupidity sometimes. And it is for this reason Dr. Luke is saying those Jews were more noble than those in Thessalonica. They received the word with all eagerness, examining the scriptures daily to see if their, these things were also true. Lastly, 
I just want to say to you this, that the best teachers are those who show you where to look, but don't tell you what to see. Do not be clever and want to change the world, but be wise and work hard in changing yourself. By so doing, you will be changing the world. Let's pray. Rarao siyami, mudi mo yosha na luwe na haayo. Ine luwe na ako tsimolo hong lega joni san siluwe. I commit these men to you, God. Holy Spirit, embrace them from the top of their head to the sole of their feet. Give them necessary wisdom and most importantly, your power to minister through your word. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. I'm going to ask just for the next few moments as I encourage you from God's word and challenge you concerning the centrality of the cross in an age where the cross is being despised. So I'm going to read just a verse from 1 Corinthians Chapter 1 and verse 18. For the message of the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing, but to us who are constantly being changed, saved, it is the power of God. I've preached this before at the men's conference recently. And I said this was in preparation for the assembly. A young boy wept bitterly when the preacher explained the horror of the crucifixion of Jesus on the cross. His mother became embarrassed and quietly whispered to him, Don't take it so personally and seriously. It happened a long time ago. Oh, that you and I would take the cross and its accomplishments personally and seriously. Because the cross was not incidental, nor unintentional to Jesus. It was not a heroic act of bravery. It was not a willing martyr dying as a rebel for a good cause. No, the cross defined everything about Jesus Christ. Because of the cross, we have Jesus. Because of Jesus, we have the cross. Jesus' life on earth was clearly, very clearly defined by the cross. This is seen in the following three points. His mission, his message, and his ministry. The first is the mission of Jesus is defined by the cross. Philippians chapter 2 and verse 7 and 8 points us to the mission of the life of Jesus. Jesus, who being in the very nature God, did not consider equality with God something to be grasped but made himself nothing, taking on the very nature of a servant, being made in human likeness and being found in the appearance like a man, he humbled himself and became obedient to death, even death on the cross. 
at God's preordained perfect time, Jesus set his face like a flint to the cross. As the time approached for Jesus to be taken up to heaven, he resolutely set out for Jerusalem. Isaiah 50 and verse 7 and 8 says, Because the sovereign Lord helps me, I will not be disgraced. Therefore I have set my face like a flint, and I know I will not be put to shame. He who vindicates me is near. Who then will bring a charge against me? Let us face each other. Who is my accuser? Let him confront me. We often, of course, don't use the phrase, set my face like a flint. Several words are used in Scripture in the Old Testament to describe this flint. It was a well-known stone of the quartz variety. It was extremely hard and is abundant in Palestine. Flint is used in Scripture as a figure of speech to denote hardness. Flint was also used as a sharp knife for circumcision and probably to skin animals. During archaeological excavations, ancient Egyptian surgery implements of flint are still found. Flint is a very hard type of cementary rock. When struck against steel, steel or another piece of flint, a flint edge produces sparks to start a fire. Setting your face like a flint implies that you are expecting some friction and strong opposition. To set your face like a flint for Jesus means to stand strong in the face of severe adversity with a determination not to give up. It means you regard the difficulties as worthwhile because you know the outcome is going to be more glorious than the struggle. So Jesus said, I am determined to give my life as a ransom. Secondly, the message of Jesus is defined by the cross, not just his mission, but the message of Jesus is defined by the cross. We often associate the message of Jesus with John 3, 16. For God so loved the world, of course he loved the world. This is a glorious truth. But the message of the cross was demonstrated by Jesus in action rather than just mere words. 1 Peter 2 and verse 21 reminds us, For to this you have been called, because Christ also suffered for you, leaving you an example to follow so that you might follow in his steps. Matthew chapter 10 and verse 38 tells us, Whoever does not take up his cross and follow me is not worthy of me. There is no cheap following Jesus. Mark 8 verse 34 says, If anyone does not come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and continually follow me. Jesus said in John, in Mark 10 and verse 21, One thing you lack, go sell everything you have and give it to the poor, and you will have treasure in heaven. Then come, take up your cross and follow me. There is a book by the title, Are You a Fan or Are You a Disciple? You see, my brothers and sisters, the Sermon of the Cross. If you take away the cross, there is no poor in spirit, only pride. Take away the cross, and there is no mourning over sin, only haughtiness. Take away the cross, and there is no meekness, only arrogance. Take away the cross, and there is no righteousness of God, only wickedness. Take away the cross, and there is no mercy, only revenge. Take away the cross, and there is no way to be pure in heart, only evil. Take away the cross, 
and there is no possibility of peace, only strife. Any attempt by you and me to preach the gospel without the centrality of the cross of Jesus Christ as the only means of salvation is no gospel at all, mere empty words. The cross is the defining message of Jesus and it must be ours. It must be mine that I preach. And if it was his definitive message, then we should glory only in the cross and never in our accomplishments or in our achievements or even if we think in our greatness. Thirdly, the ministry of Jesus is defined by the cross. The ministry Jesus exercised was to serve God and to serve others. Jesus was never self-absorbed and wanted to make a name for himself. Jesus emphatically stated that his will was to do the will of the Father. My food is to do the will of him who sent me and to finish this work while it is day. I said Jesus at the end of his life in John 17 in that prayer, the high priestly prayer, he said, I have brought you glory on earth by finishing the work that you gave me to do. Oh God, help me that at the end of my life, I will be able to say, I have brought you glory on earth by finishing the task you've given to me and I have worked the work while it was still day. The ministry of Jesus, of others, two others rather, is very clearly spelt out in the prophecy of Isaiah chapter 61 and fulfilled through the life of Jesus on earth. Isaiah 61 verse 1 to 3. The spirit of the sovereign Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to preach good news to the poor. He has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim freedom for the captives and release from darkness the prisoners, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor and the day of vengeance of our God, to comfort all who mourn and to provide for those who grieve in Zion, to bestow on them a crown of beauty instead of ashes. What a wonderful gospel. The oil of joy instead of mourning and a garment of praise instead of a spirit of despair. Brothers, those who have come onto our lists, those who are probationists, those who have served 60 years and beyond in ministry, what a privilege to say, I speak on behalf of him who sent me. I have been entrusted entrusted with this ministry of reconciliation. I can say in the words of the old hymn, look to Jesus now and live. Jesus ministered in the power of the Holy Spirit as a man. He never misused the sacred privilege of ministering to others to solicit their approval or their accolades. He did not preach to get likes from his followers. Jesus ministered to a wide range of people that included the outcasts of society, the, self, the religious self-righteous people, the poor, the needy, the vulnerable, the rulers, the politicians, men, women, and children, fraudsters, harlots, tax collectors, the sick, the demon-possessed, the widows, and the whosoever will, let him come to me, and those who come to me, I will in no wise cast out. His ministry to the Father and to others flowed out of his love relationship with his Father. Jesus was a servant leader and a servant minister who clearly said, the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve 
and to give his life as a ransom. These points just again. The the mission of Jesus was defined by the cross. The message of Jesus was defined by the cross. The ministry of Jesus was defined by the cross. What defines my ministry and what defines your ministry? Without the centrality of the cross, men will remain hopeless, destitute, without God and without hope. But when I am lifted up, I will draw all men to myself. May we lift Jesus up for the world to see. May we be able to say, Look, looking unto Jesus, the author and the perfecter of our faith. I'm going to give you a moment as I've given myself many moments to reflect on the ministry and the mission and the message of the cross. May I always glory in the cross. Let's stand together and we'll sing when I survey the wondrous cross on which the Prince of Glory died. My riches gain, my achievements I can't but loss, and poor content at all my crown. Let's worship the Lord as we prepare our hearts for worship. Mark will lead us as we sing. When I survey the wondrous cross on which the prince of glory died my riches king I count but lost and poor on all my pride forbid it Lord that I should boast save in the death of Christ my God oh
of glory died. My riches gain, I count but lost and poor content on all my pride. Thank you. Please be seated. It was when I became a Christian by the grace of God about 45 years ago by now that him and particularly the part that says love so amazing, so divine, it does not suggest it demands that I give him my all. I read one verse again from 2 Corinthians chapter 9 and verse 15. And it simply says, Thanks be to God for his indescribable gifts. This passage, as you would know, speaks about monetary giving, giving generously, hilariously, giving without grumbling, giving cheerfully. But it is dim in the light of the greatest gift that was ever given. The gift of Jesus the gift of superabundant life in Christ Jesus. Paul says, thanks be to God for this indescribable gift, unspeakable gift. It literally means, of course, that which cannot adequately in any known language be fully understood and fully declared. No human language can perfectly, perfectly convey this indescribable gift. We know that this gift is not given to us as a reward based on any good works that we have done or accomplished. It is not given on any merit. Because while we were yet sinners, Christ died. The righteous for the unrighteous. The Savior for the sinner. And Paul says, do you want me to boast? I will glory only in the cross. I will glory only in the finished work of Jesus. And I want to say and remind us today that this gift is God's greatest gift. This gift of Jesus, the gift of forgiveness, the gift of pardon, the gift of becoming heirs of the Father, joint heirs with the Son, the gift of having been chosen before the creation of the world, the gift of the power and the presence and the person of the Holy Spirit He has given to you and me, the gift of superabundant life in Jesus Christ. So we glory in nothing else except God's greatest gift. He is unsearchable, he is inexpressible and glorious gifts. Again, I ask you, bow your heads around that table and remove anything that you believe is in your heart that would ever make you think that you are so deserving of this gift. That you have worked so hard Or that you ever can glory in anything that you have accomplished. 
For by grace you have been saved and I have been saved. Not of ourselves. It is a gift from God. So that no man can boast or even compare himself with somebody else. Was it not for your grace, where would I have been? I glory in the cross. I glory in the Savior who died in my stead, in my place, on my behalf, who took the judgment and the punishment and the ridicule, and by his stripes, I am forgiven. By his mercy, I've been adopted into the beloved. And by his grace, I am justified by faith and not by works, any works of the flesh, so that no man can ever boast. Our Lord Jesus, on the night when he was betrayed, he took the bread, and will you please open your little container. Be careful when you open it, it doesn't spill all over you. Help somebody when they struggle there. You take the wafer. On the night when he was betrayed, Jesus was betrayed, took the bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke the bread and said, Take it, this is my body, which was broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Let us eat the bread in acknowledgement that he was wounded for our transgressions. Let's share bread together around the table. In the same manner, after supper, he took the cup and said, This cup is now the new covenant in my blood. Whenever you drink this, you drink this in memory of me, and only until I come again, and then we will feast forever with him in glory. Let's drink with thanksgiving in our hearts to our Savior, Jesus Christ, our only Lord. Again, just take a few moments of quiet reflection and thank him again for his love, for his mercy, and for his forgiveness. I'm going to ask Sister Mariana, I think she's somewhere there at the back. Is she there? Can you please come up here, my dear? And I want you just to close for us in prayer and thank the Lord for his indescribable and glorious gifts. Heavenly Father, we thank you on an evening like this where we can stop for a moment and just express our incredible appreciation for the gifts that you've bestowed upon us. Thank you for the freedom that you give us. Thank you for the strength and the endurance that you give us. Thank you for everything. And as we go from this place, Lord, may you grant us the rest that we need and all that we need for tomorrow as we live for your glory. 
We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Mark, I'm going to beg your indulgence if we can just sing the chorus part of that wonderful hymn, So I'll Cherish the Old Rugged Cross. Amen? We love that old rugged cross, so let's sing that part. So I'll cherish the old rugged cross, and then I'll pronounce a benediction. And will there need to be any announcements made? We start tomorrow morning at 8 o'clock with some reorientation or orientation for those who need to be here. All right, and we trust that you'll have a good night of this. Please stand together as we sing, So I'll Cherish the Old Rugged Cross. We we'll sing it by twice or so. This, that verse. Far away stood an old rugged cross, the emblem of suffering and shame. And I love that old cross where the dearest and best for a world of lost sinners was laid. And so I'll cherish the old rugged cross. So I'll cherish. So I'll cherish the old rugged cross. So I'll cherish the old rugged cross till my trophies at last I lay down. I will cling to the Now with the God of peace, who through the blood of the eternal covenant brought back from the dead, our Lord Jesus Christ, that eternal shepherd of the sheep, may he equip all of us, working within all of our hearts, that which is both pleasing and acceptable, and unto Jesus Christ, our sovereign Lord, to him alone be praise and glory, majesty, dominion and power, both now and forevermore, and all God's people said, Amen and amen. God bless you. Enjoy a good night's rest.